Hi and welcome to the last day of your seven day challenge. So well done and congratulations for getting this far. You've, you've done incredibly well and seriously, it'll put you so far ahead of most um, wannabe affiliate marketers. It's just hard to explain just how far you've actually gone. Let's take a look then at the statistics from the traffic that was sent out on day six. So on day six, you set up a traffic source and you send that traffic out and we want to know how that performed. So we can have a look at that here in the under an affiliate center and the affiliate traffic statistics. And here we are on the traffic statistics page. And this is a overview now. So what we'll get is this is all the traffic, all the things that we sent out, all the sales links, all the lead links um, and all the sales etc that have been done you know within this particular account so over here you've got a number of graphs i'm not going to go through those uh, you're going to play with those but you can see the graphs uh, as they are in donut form you can also change them to a bar graph uh, which gives you some more numbers on there but to be fair you know, once you've done a few of these uh, mail outs and you've done a few traffic sources you'll find these at this level at least get um, a little bit crowded so Let's try and drill down so we can make a bit more sense of this. So before, actually, just before I do, let me just have a look at the left-hand side here. So if we look on the left-hand side, we can actually see the, we have, in this particular account, we have 14 sales, and we can see that we have this particular link. So the sale was generated from this link. So this is the that's NGA special offer, that's Next Generation Affiliate. Uh, so on the NGA affiliate discount and down here we've got a weight loss special three weight loss special two and weight loss special one so this enables us to actually identify what links actually generated the sale and we can see what the sale is and we can also see the it says the product name is actually the funnel name if you like so the main product name here and then the item ID may be the main product in this case that is the main product or the 205809 down here, this is actually the uh, one of the OTOs, uh, which is actually tools and templates for next generation affiliate. So these are the, in this particular case, these are JVZoo sales. So you know, these are the JVZoo IDs for those particular products. And over here is the receipt ID. The receipts are the individual transaction IDs. I think if you look inside the JVZoo account, these begin with AP dash and then like OKLO. Four seven five three, whatever it is. So these match up for from inside your uh, Warrior Plus. Uh, sorry, for inside your JVZoo account in this particular case. Of course, if it's Warrior Plus, it would be uh, it would be matching up your Warrior Plus account. So let's go and have a look at the traffic in more detail. Now I sent out in the uh, as I was moving. Start again here. So as I was writing the day one to seven, I actually followed the process myself, obviously, and I sent out some traffic. If I sent a, a few out, so you could have a little look to see what uh, what happened and, and how that went. So I sent some traffic out to some lead magnets. So I created a lead magnet exactly the same way as I showed you or asked you to do uh, in the previous day's challenges. And my particular one, uh, the main one I sent out here, actually was uh, get my software. That was the link that I used and obviously this is a particular traffic source it was a solo ad and goes out to the next generation affiliate product and this particular campaign and by clicking the traffic by lead link now I can actually see the statistics of how that traffic performed so what we can see now is the graphs are a bar graph and say with bar graphs you get some numbers in so I can have a look and see what's going on so let me just explain to you how to read this. So I'm just going to roll that up slightly. And what we have here is the uh, number of clicks that that link had. So this is 186 here, and the number of unique clicks. So you know, quite often the, the number of clicks might be higher if that's, uh, the same person's clicked on the same link multiple times. Um, but the number that you're really looking at is the unique link. So this is the unique individuals who have clicked on that particular link so that's the kind of numbers that are more realistic for you to work with sometimes they can vary they shouldn't vary hugely but they, they, they quite often is a little discrepancy between the two 
And you can see that here, let's say 186, 176. So I'm looking at 176 um, unique clicks. And if I look down here, I can see where they've come from, or what, exactly what date and time they came in, and the IP address they've came from, so I can make sure they're, they're unique. And if I look down here, it says subscribers, I've got 50. So from those 176 clicks, I got 50 subscribers. So 50 people signed up or in the opt-in form and managed to actually get fully signed up as a subscriber. So I've got 50 subscribers from that particular list. So I'm looking at the numbers there and that's 176. So that was 200, that'd be about 25%. Uh, if it was 150, it would be um, 30%. So it's somewhere between 25 and 30%, which is probably around about average for uh, getting signups from the numbers. So I'm quite happy with that. And let me just have a look at a couple more. I sent out a couple more solo ads as well, to say just so you have a few more things to look at. And you can just kind of see how things vary slightly. Uh, they've got the free affiliate software. Let's do another one. Let's try that one. And again, let's look at the traffic by lead link. And there we go. So this particular one, I got 115 clicks. And from those 115 clicks, I've got 42 signups. So you can see that performed actually a lot better. So it's exactly the same opt-in form that I used, exactly the same free offer, the same lead magnet, just a different traffic source. And from that, I can see a 42 uh, from 115. I'm guessing that's more like 38%, something like that change. So that, that's pretty good uh, as, as far as the opt-ins are concerned from the actual number of clicks. And I think I've got another one, a third one that I did, the NGA free software. Um, NGA free software, there we go. Let's just have a look at that one. And there we go. So I've got a similar number of clicks, or a little under 100. So I've got 93 clicks uh, in this particular case and 22 subscribers. So that's kind of a little bit less than 25%. So not as good as the previous one or not as good as the previous two, but you know, it's not the end of the world. The more important factor is how many sales that you make from these signups. You know, realistically, you, you, with this kind of thing, 25% sign up is probably reasonable expectation. But what we're really looking for is how these convert to sales. So Let's go and have a look for these particular campaigns. I actually then sent out a set of follow-up emails. Oh, that's sorry, that's the important thing from here as well. Uh, you notice in all these three that I sent out, actually I didn't make a single front-end sale. Now you can make front-end sales. Uh, it's certainly not impossible, it does happen. Um, but for sure, the majority of sales are always made in the follow-up email sequence. So we've added one in there, we've added a weeks of follow-up emails promoting this same product, the Next Generation Affiliate. And if I go and look now and see what that is, the actual link that I used in the emails was the uh, was NGA Special Offer. So somewhere in here, we've got, there we are, NGA Special Offer. So this is the link, this is, so this is a track by the sales link. So I say this is the sales link, the link that goes direct to the sales page and that was in um, four follow-up emails that I put in over the week. And let's just see how that performed. So again, so from the various traffic sources I put in there, uh, that uh, I then mailed out to for that link. I've got a total of 86 clicks that actually went to the sales page. So from those 86 clicks, you can see that I made one, two, three, four, five sales. Like down here, it says total five sales. So from 100, from 86 clicks, I've got five sales, and that is actually pretty good. And if I look at the sales, as I say, it's all from this same link, the NGA special offer, because I use that link in the emails. And it's the next generation affiliate is the product or the, the uh, main product. 
and I look at the item ID, I can see that I've got 205807. I've got four of those, but that is the main JVZoo next generation affiliate product. And I've got one of the 205809, which is the OTO1, which is the um, tools and templates upsell. So I've got four front ends and an upsell from that traffic, but only because I followed it up with the email sequence. As you can see, even for this, this is a stark list because I made no sales on the front end, no sales on the um, initial uh, sign up, and then they were presented with the sales page as soon as they became subscribers. And in actual, in actual case, I didn't make any sales at all. Uh, but I did make five sales with the follow-up sequence. So you can see how important this follow-up email sequence is. So if you've got these subscribers on your list, you can, can keep mailing out to them. And in fact, what happens now is each week, you need to add a new product into your follow-up sequence. So get the next product inside here. Let's just go and have a look. Go to the affiliate center at the front here, JVZoo Auto Approval Affiliate Center. And we've got the offers in here, depending on what month you're on, depends on how many offers you'll have here. So we've got things like the Power Online Reviews, Total Mobile Pages, Periscope Power. So we get each of these need to be added in to promote, to be promoted with a sales link in a, some follow up email, exactly the same as you did in one of the previous day's challenges. So let me just go back to the traffic statistics again. So what are five sales from the traffic that we have purchased? The reality is we've made some sales, but we probably haven't made a profit. We'd be lucky if we've broken even. That's, again, would probably be unrealistic. But that's not the point. The point now is, is that we have built a list of people. We have sold some products and this is just week one so as we add our week two follow-up for the next product and week three follow-up for the following product these same people will be sent through automatically and made those paid offers and as they then purchase those offers as we go through maybe the same person the products may not appeal to everybody so that's why we have a range of different products and of course they will just uh, be automatically presented to them over time and hopefully they'll be purchasing more and that is what then turns you into profit because you don't pay for the traffic again once you've built these subscribers that's free traffic for you so that reduces your traffic costs massively obviously free traffic is a massively cheap traffic source but it's cost you to get that traffic source in the beginning and now you have to drive that traffic source through your continuous offers in your follow-up emails and that's what turns you into profit and when you're in profit then of course you buy more traffic put more people into your subscribers list and they again will follow through the whole process and that will just build up over time until such time as all you need to do is basically drop traffic into the front end because the back end will be built up and over time will continually make you money So if I look on this home page here again, and I look down here, I mentioned earlier that I have these 20 minute blog weight loss edition, which I did a campaign on. And I wanted to know in more detail which of the specific emails were actually making the sales. So what I did was each email, I gave a different link. So I created a completely separate link in this case, they were called Weight Loss Special 1 and Weight Loss Special 2 and Weight Loss Special 3. And I put a different link in each of the emails of the follow-up uh, in the follow-up sequence. And as you can see from here, I can see that Weight Loss Special 1 did two sales and the Weight Loss Special 2 did two sales and Weight Loss Special 3 did one sale. As other ones are opened up, different people will open up different emails. If the emails themselves have different subject lines, different uh, emotional triggers to get people to open them and buy them, then they'll be opened up by different people. So you just get a much better chance of getting it. As you can see here, if I'd sent out one email, the first one, uh, I would have made two sales. And quite possibly, even if I'd resent the same email again, 
you know, two or three times, I possibly wouldn't have made any more sales because I'd already hit the emotional triggers or the interest of the subject for the people that have already opened it up. So less and less were likely to open. But by changing that email, changing the emotional triggers, changing the subject lines, I'm getting just as many people to open up the second time and, and so on. So again, this is more for the future. At the moment, I would kind of stick with your email sequence and just put, like I've done here, just use one link and put it in all your that week's emails for that one product. And then you can see what the numbers are similar to here. You can say I've got another product project that I did down here with a different link, which I used the NJ affiliate discount. Again, this was different traffic sources and then added to a different list. And then uh, these were follow-up emails and from there, you can see I've actually got uh, four sales and in this particular case I actually got two two front ends the 205807 and two back ends so I got four sales which is nearly as many as those but I can see that you know both of those people bought the back end as well as the front end now obviously these are only a, a few sales so statistically it's hard to get any information uh, to get genuine information from that you know, when you've got 50, 100 sales in there, then things will start to look a bit different. But at that point in time, you've got the hang of the process, the hang of the way things work, and you can start doing more detail like I've done down here and putting individual links in, and you can do a deeper analysis of the sales. And of course, you know, when you link those back to the traffic sources, you then start to understand how good that traffic source is, not just because the conversion to leads, or subscribers, but to the conversion to actual sales. Okay, so that's your challenge for today, is to go through this with the data that you've got back from your mail. As I said, you may have only sent out one solo ad or one set of traffic, probably with 100 clicks. So there'll be you know, probably a lot less to look at. You probably need to put more traffic out to do this. But I just wanted to get you to day seven. I wanted to get you working. I wanted to get you understanding the whole process and the whole system so that you can really start to move forward. So this is what the seven day challenge is about, is getting you to this point. This isn't the end. This is really the beginning for you. So after this day seven challenge, you should have understood the basics and actually gone through the whole process of setting up things from the JVC Auto Approve Center. And of course now, you can pick other pro other products and and use those for your lead finder to get other people in and you can check against you know, whether those products and your traffic sources sending you can send the same traffic source for instance to different products and you will see more signups probably from different people again adding all that in and of course the next move after that is to move on to additional uh, third party once you've you know, you've got your history now, you've got your numbers, you've got some sales in, you've got some statistics within JVZoo, and now when you start asking for approvals, uh, people will start approving their products, which is the big problem you would have had before. Once you start getting products approved from people, you can move on to the JVZoo Affiliate Center for JVZoo products, and getting those approved, adding those in, and again, this enables you to add in a lot of other products and now use your free offers again to build your list, build your campaigns in a very similar manner as we did in the auto approved affiliate center. Okay, so that's me finished up for day seven. Again, congratulations. Again, a great place to get to, but just remember, as I said, this isn't the end. This is just the beginning and I hope you have lots of sales as we go through.